Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometry. We are talking about instrumental variable and in the previous lecture we spoke in detail about different sources of endogeneity and one of these different sources is reverse causality. Now by reverse causality we mean where we have where we have both x and y present in the model and x influencing y and at the same time y is also influencing x. So there is certain amount of circularity involved in the modeling. Now we do not want that we actually want to avoid this kind of circularity and we'll see how to really avoid it okay we basically will see that with instrumental variable we can actually avoid this kind of circularity now the reverse causality is something that will often present in simultaneous equation model and we're going to see what is a simultaneous equation model and how the reverse causality is present so let me actually uh, talk about the what happens if we have reverse causality so we will have a bit b2ols which is a biased estimator of beta 2 and essentially uh, the, the other so the bias is a problem and the other problem is uh, the inconsistency by inconsistency we mean if n tends to infinity so b2 ols is not going to be beta 2 okay so these problems we are going to see when i have reverse causality problem now when we talk about this uh, simultaneous equation model so let me take an example so previously we spoke about the child labor problem where child labor and family income we have seen that both can be used as x and y variable and here we will take another example uh, where we will talk about the price rate and wage rate and I took this example from Christopher Doggett's textbook. Now let me uh, give, let me write down a couple of equations and then I will explain the economics behind this equation. So the equation 1, let's the price rate, the price rate is basically price rate is equal to let's say beta 1 plus beta 2 wage rate and let's say there is an error term here up okay and the second equation is the wage rate and the wage rate is let's say alpha 1 plus alpha 2 price rate and alpha 3 unemployment and then there is an error component let's say I am noting it as uw so let me explain the economics behind these two equations. So in the first equation, it is basically saying that price is actually, price rate is actually dependent on the wage rate. Now how can I explain how an economist will think this? So essentially if the wage rate is increasing, so people will have more money at their disposal, so they can buy more things with that new, you know, additional money. And the moment you can buy more things, there will be more demand in the market as compared to the supply and then the price will increase. So that is essentially wage rate is influencing the price rate. So the second equation that can, we can also explain the second equation. So let's say the prices are increasing. So when the prices are increasing, what will happen is that people working in different organization will ask for a raise. They will want their wages to increase because they need to, they want to maintain some standard of living. Now. So basically the price uh, uh, upward pressure on price would also you know because of the high bargaining power or given bargaining power of the levers the wage rate will also feel a upward pressure. Now on the other hand if there is a high unemployment let's in the market now high, high unemployment will reduce the bargaining power of the labor. So essentially that will cut down on the bargaining power and then even if the price rate will increase because of the high unemployment people may just not uh, you know try to let's say you know pressurize the management to raise, to give a raise so essentially unemployment is also important so far as wage rate is concerned so these are my two equations and we will see uh, how this reverse causality and endogeneity problem is present here now of course we can see here that in the first equation the w is influencing p whereas in the second equation it is a uh, P which is influencing W. So quite clearly we can see or you know quite clearly we can see that the reverse causality problem is present here. Now let me uh, we can also uh, call these equations actually structural equations. Structural equations. Now let us actually try to make these equations, the first equation free of W and second equation free of P. So let us actually write down P in terms of the other variable and W in terms of the other variable. So let me substitute 
equation 2 into equation 1. So let me write down P is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 into W means alpha 1 plus alpha 2 P. Then we have alpha 3 U and then we have U W plus U P. All right. Now if I let's see if I multiply all these terms and then take this one in the left hand side so I'll get P into 1 minus alpha 2 beta 2 is equal to I will have beta 1 plus alpha 1 beta 2 plus alpha 3 beta 2 u plus beta 2 uw and then I have my up. Now if I divide both sides with 1 minus alpha 2 by beta alpha 2 beta 2 so I will have p is equal to this is going to be one minus alpha two beta two is equal to beta one plus alpha one beta two plus alpha three beta two u plus beta two this small u w and then small u p all right so this is my equation of price and in my right hand side I have actually removed the w and this equation is called reduced form equation. So the first set of equation is called a structural equation and this is called reduced reduced form equation form equation. Similarly I can also express w in terms of uh, basically by removing P from W. So what I'll do in the second equation, I'll substitute P and let me take a new page and I'll write down W is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Now equation for P was beta 1 plus beta 2 W plus U W um, U P. So this is I'm writing the equation of price rate right? and then I have alpha 3 then I will have alpha 3 into unemployment u and then finally I have u w. Now again like previous the previous case we will take we will multiply this alpha 2 with the other values and then I will take alpha 2 beta 2 on the left hand side. So w into 1 minus alpha 2 beta 2 is going to be is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 beta 1 plus alpha 2 up plus alpha 3 u and then uw. Now if I divide both sides by 1 minus alpha 2 beta 2 so what I will get is w is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 beta 1 plus alpha 2 up plus alpha 3 u plus u w by 1 minus alpha 2 beta 2 all right so note here of course we have removed p from the equation of w now this also this equation also known as the reduced form equation okay just like the previous one now one thing we need to note here is w is depending on which variables and p is depending on which variables and how the relationship is whether they are directly uh, related or indirectly related. So in this equation let's first start with w so we see that there is a w e, uh, so u w so this is uh, there in the you know in the equation the equation of w the first structural equation of w so this one is influencing directly. Similarly, u is also present in the structural equation. This one is also influencing directly. So these both are influencing directly, directly. Whereas the up, this is coming through the root of price. Now this one is, uh, you know, mediated through price, and this is influencing indirectly. So there are three variables, 
three uh, variables uh, which are or three uh, yeah three variables up uw and u they are influencing w in uh, either directly or indirectly now similarly for p we can see that we have u we have uw and we have up so they are either directly influenced uh, influencing directly or in influencing indirectly so here w and uh, so capital U and UW, they are actually directing, they are actually influencing indirectly, indirectly and this one is influencing directly because that is already there in the structural equation, alright. Now this variable, this W and P which we can see that there is this relationship of reverse causality. We mentioned it previously, but uh, we mentioned it again. They are called the endogenous variables here. So W and P are endogenous variables. Endogenous variables. Now here we have one variable which is not endogenous. So here W and P is determined by the model. So that is why we call them an endogenous variable. But look at the variable unemployment. So unemployment is given exogenously, unemployment rate. So, unemployment rate is not determined by the model. So, it is called exogenous variable. So, this is very important in the context of reverse causality and, uh, you know, the endogeneity problem and when you actually use instrumental variable to address these problems. So, we will see the importance of exogenous and endogenous variable when we want to use the instrumental variable. All right. Now, now we understood that which depends on what and, you know, how they are related directly or indirectly. Now, going forward, we will try to see, we will go back to the structural equation and we will actually try to estimate, uh, get an estimate of the uh, B2 OLS. So, let us say P, P was beta 1 plus beta 2 W and U P, small u P. Now, if I want to get a beta 2 OLS estimate for this, so what I will get is, you know, following the previous, you know, uh, we have learned it previously is equal to summation w i minus w bar into u p i minus u p bar and in the denominator i will have i will have summation w i minus w bar all right square and this is our all n this is our all n all right now, we have seen previously, now if we actually, you know, we have seen previously that the W is actually dependent on UP indirectly, okay. Now, if I sort of uh, use the equation for, If I use the equation for our, this error and, and take expectation, we will see that the we, we cannot make this term uh, equal to 0 or if we take the p limb for both the sides, we will see that we cannot make this term is equal to 0 and we can do that. Let us say p limb, let me use a different color, p limb b2 ls, so beta 2 is constant, so it is going to be beta 2 and then I will take Pilim on both numerator and de denominator, Pilim all over in Wi minus W bar and then Upi minus Up bar and then again in my denominator I will have Pilim summation Wi minus W bar whole square. Now we know that it will not make sense if I do not divide it by n. So if I divide it by n, both numerator and denominator, what I am going to have is Pilim 1 by n summation w i minus w bar u p i minus u p bar and similarly in the denominator I will have Pilim 1 by n summation w i minus w bar whole square. So, we know what it means in the numerator it is basically the covariance term and in the denominator we are going to have the variance term. So, let me 
write it down beta 2 this will covariance w up and variance of w now we can you know sort of substitute the value of w and see what happens to covariance but intuitively we can make sense because of the fact that w is actually having a term up uh, which is basically uh, w is indirectly related to up so this term this term cannot be zero okay so once this term is not zero our estimator is going to be biased so that is that is basically the problem and even for pilim when we have seen for n tends to infinity we cannot reach to uh, b2 ls does not reach to beta 2 so that is the problem of consistency that's essentially that is an inconsistency problem so uh, that is uh, basically um, the thing that we see here now you can think it as this uh, going forward let's say you have this equation it's an intuitive intuitive sense how we can think of it let's say i have an equation where y is equal to let's say alpha 1 plus alpha 2 ax and let's say u now when i have this kind of thing here when my when my x variable is not free from my error term so what will happen is that any change in x is going to influence the error term so change in x we are actually interested to know if the change in x how the change in x is actually influencing the y term so let's say this is my a process and but we know that uh, if the covariance uh, x and u is not zero this is also influencing the u term so let's say this is a b process and we know that this u term is also influencing the y and because the u term is influenced by x so that is that is being compounded in the effect on x so essentially what is happening is this y is going to get all these different influences because of x so this is the problem we we do not want to get all these extra influences we we would just want to get this influence here so we will try to see uh, how using instrumental variable we can address this problem and we will see by taking an instrument for which this relationship between x and u and their covariance is zero we can actually get a result which we want and that we will cover in the next lecture. So with this we end this lecture here. Thank you.